Hey everybody, it's Andrew Kayser with AndrewKayser.com. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I am still a little re shaken up from this weekend of the, the Lions winning and you know Michigan winning again. And so we uh, we're having a good week. Had a little bit of trouble this morning with some server issues, but other than that, things are looking great. I wanted to start making this video to show you guys how I'm going to finish off this uh, order form. Basically what we have is a, a billing information for your address and then a shipping information. And what we want to happen, what we want to have happen is when some a user clicks on this little button right here, we want this form to get pre-populated with all the data that they have up here. So inside of the HTML file, don't mind it, don't mind the, uh, the no design. This is a uh, strictly a jQuery development site. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the document ready function for jQuery. And we're going to go right ahead and now I have an ID of use same shipping check. Now if you have watched my videos you will know that I use very descriptive names and I don't I try not to short shorten anything because you know that's when other people can't read your code. So you want to you want to keep that in mind. So the first thing we want to do is detect it if it's clicked. So we're going to do we're going to select it with the CSS selector for IDs which is the pound sign. And then we're going to use the live function and we'll determine for click and we'll close that off. Now, this part this part was the tricky part to figure out is how to determine if the actual checkbox was checked, yes or no. So, what what we ended up doing is using an if statement and we select the same thing again except this time we use the attribute checked and we will alert yes if it is and we'll do else and alert no if it's not we're going to come over here and refresh the page so now when we click on it okay yes it is clicked and we see that so we're going to click on it again and yep there it is okay so so that is working so what we need to do now is we're going to delete these alerts and we're going to start filling out the actual functionality of this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab all the information from the what is that? The billing address. So if we're using the same shipping information as the billing information, grab all the billing information. So the first thing I'm going to do is define define the variables for the billing address line 1, line 2, the city, state and zip. That all will be billing address line one. You're gonna to have to bear with me while I type this all out because uh, yeah well it's a lot of let's see if I can uh, speed this up a little bit um, let's see we got we got billing name, billing address, line one, line two, city, state, and zip City, state, whoa, okay, so we got line two, and then we got name, okay, so now we have all those variables, and we need to stick them into all the shipping, and you know, shipping elements. So now we're going to set the value of those like this using the, the same selector for the shipping name. We'll do dot val and then inside of that we'll use billing 
address, well, excuse me, billing line one. Actually, wow, hold on, gotta go back. <laughs> And and that we need to we need to go through and change these. This is one of the bad things about copying and pasting is that you you miss little things like this. So we're gonna go ahead and do line two city state and zip. So now we grab the shipping name and make the value the billing name. We're going to repeat that for all of them as well. So we'll do the hmm, shipping address line one dot val billing address line one. And again, we're going to go through here and just do this real quick. Just Line two, city state zip. Line two. Now, if you uh, if you have the time, go through and just write it all out so that you know, I'm trying to make things fast for videos, but obviously, I'm sitting here kind of wishing I didn't have to because it, it is just so much smoother to just keep going and okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to make sure that this is working we're gonna save it real quick I'm gonna refresh now I'm gonna just type in my I'll just type in Andrew Kayser real quick and click on that now I'm getting an error so but it's it's updating something so let's let's go ahead and check out the console and see what is happening ASDF okay so it's getting updated but HTML input element object okay so this is with the name Billing address name. Oh, okay. So I just had the wrong variable. So we're going to go ahead and come back to this. Refresh. Let me type in my name, Andrew Kayser. We'll do 1010 binary lane from Kalamazoo, Michigan. 001. And we're going to click that. And there we go. Now we got Andrew Kayser, 1010 binary lane, Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's not my real address, by the way. That's that's just the fake address I, I've always used when signing up for websites. Um, okay, so one thing I'm noticing is when I click on this, it doesn't do anything. And really, if I don't want the same information there, I want it to remove that information. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to grab this little snippet of code where it defines all the variables. I'm just going to replace all of these with like an empty quote just to just to reset it back to being a <clears throat> blank you know uh, a null no information in it basically I'm not really sure I'm <laughs> it's so hard to focus <laughs> okay let's try it again Andrew Kayser 1010 binary lane Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49001. And let's go ahead and use that. And let's go ahead and get rid of it. And let's go ahead and bring it back. Okay. And then, you know, whatever you change will be there the next time. So that's that's pretty much it. You know, that, that kind of gives you a little hint of how to use if statements and, you know, uh, grab variables from, you know, the exact moment that it's clicked because if we define these before the if statement they would be empty every time that the page loaded so that's why you got to put them inside of the if statement so every time you click it it's a new definition of the variable that you're going to be using so if you guys have any questions let me know you know this is a you'll be seeing this on some of my websites i'm definitely going to be using this on almost 
all of my websites if I have an order form on them. Uh, a plat we're developing a platform right now. That's kind of what this is for. And you know, we uh, we will see you guys around in the next video. I hope you all had a great weekend, and I will see you all in the next video. I think I just said that. All right. Anyways, AndyKazer.com. Peace out.